Hi guys, Avi here and welcome to part 3 of creating our first Django application. In this video, we are going to populate the database we created using two methods, the Django shell and the Django admin page. So now we're done with our database. We have made all the changes required and the last thing we have to do is populate our database. Let's get started. So what I want you to do is in your terminal again, hit python manage.py shell. The first way in which we're going to learn how to populate our database is going to be through the Django shell. And then after that, I'll show you a very neat way through the admin site. So import Django to get the Django working. And then I want you to say Django.setup. So what Django.setup does is it now allows us to access the database values. So now we can say from polls.model, models, I'm sorry, import question comma choice. So this code right here, what we're doing is from our polls model, we want to import the question and choice class that we created so that we can give it values. Right now, if I see if there are any questions by saying question dot objects dot all, it's blank because we haven't added any questions. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, what parameters does a question take? It takes in text and it takes in the date published. So since I don't want to write out my date, I'm gonna say from django.utils import time zone, okay? And then I'm gonna say Q is equal to question, capital Q, I'm sorry, question, and then question text. So now we're just gonna enter the parameters. Question text is equal to what's your name, I guess. And we're gonna have one more parameter, which is the date time. So what we can now do is say pub date is equal to time zone dot now. That's the reason why we imported time zone. So now question has been created. That's fantastic. Let's go ahead and save the question. And now if we get um, the objects to all statement, let me just go ahead and get that over here. We get question, question, object. Huh? You see this, it shows that we've created a question but it's not useful. It's no, it, we can't use this information to our benefit. So what we're gonna do is going back to our models.py file up top, we're gonna add one more statement and that's gonna be the def str. So what this basically does is whenever we call or whenever we use this object, it's gonna return the question text. So return self.question text, okay? And then same for the choice. So def str self return self dot choice text okay that's that and now i believe we have to exit out yep we have to exit out so go ahead and exit um exit and then just the brackets and do the same commands again so we want to first of all import i'm sorry python shell uh python manage.py shell all right, and then we're gonna import Django, and then we are going to Django.setup. So it's basically the same stuff we did all over again. And now from polls.models, import question comma choice. I probably should have done this before, but just to show you guys how the str function works, there we go. And now if we do questions.objects.all, whoops, objects.all, we now have question, what's your name? Fantastic. So that's the whole purpose of the STR self. All right, so the next thing we have to do is add some choices and I'll do this quickly, um, pretty fast. So I'm just gonna say q.choiceset.create and then it's gonna pass in three parameters. So to not waste your time at all, um, I'm going to fast forward the video just a bit. It says Q is not defined. Oh, and the reason being we haven't set Q to anything. So go ahead and say Q is equal to question dot objects dot get and then PK equal to one. Basically PK, ID, they're all the same thing. What you can do is to get the get any question from your database, um, whenever you create it, it's assigned an ID and a PK value. So to get it back, all you have to do is say objects dot get and then that ID or that PK number. So now if I say Q dot choice um, set dot create. So the same line as above, it now works. We have a choice, Bob. Let's go ahead and do that with another name. Um, let's say Rachel 
And let's go ahead and do that with another name, uh, Fred. Awesome. So those are our three choices. That's fantastic. And now let's just go ahead and save. Awesome. So we've saved our question. We've saved our choices. That's exactly what we wanted to do. And fantastic. We just got our first set of data into our database. Now, the next thing I want to, guys, I want to show you guys is the admin tool. So to access the admin tool, the first thing we need is actually a login. So a super user. So go ahead and say python manage.py super user or create super user, super user. And it's gonna ask username, it's gonna ask your email address. So go ahead and enter that, gmail.com and then enter your password. Awesome. So we've created our super user. Now we can access the admin page. Um, but one thing we wanna do before that, actually you know what, scratch that. So a new window. Let me show this over here. Head over to your server. So first of all, run the server. Python manage.py run server will run the server for us. As you can see, we can now access it at 127.0.0.1. So if you head over to that 0.0.0 slash that slash admin, we should now see the admin page. We have our username, we have our password. So go ahead and enter whatever you um, had over there and log in. Awesome. So this is your Django administration site. Um, it currently has two models, groups and users. Don't worry about that. We don't really care. What we want to do is we want to see our questions and our choice right over here, which isn't there right now. So what we're going to do is head back to your code and in your admin.py, I believe, yes, it's going to be your admin.py over here. Go ahead and add the following code from dot models. So we want to access those question comma choice, right? And then we're going to say admin dot site dot register question. And then admin dot site dot register choice. One neat thing about this is even though our server is running, any changes we make will immediately show in our website. So open this up, refresh, Awesome guys, we have our polls app, we've got our choices, we've got our questions, fantastic. So now we're almost there. What I want you guys to do is head over to your questions, take a look, we have your what's your name question. I'm gonna go ahead and add one more question. Uh, I'm gonna say, what's your age? Um, you can see now, it looks like I spelled date published wrong, that's all right, but this is how it looks like. We added that char field, we added that date time field, this is the outcome. Go ahead and say day as today, time as now, and save. All right, that's the new question that's been added. And now go back to your home page and let's go ahead and add choices. So I want to go, I want you guys to see the power of foreign key. So as you can see, the foreign key is now allowing us to specifically choose which question do we want that choice to be. So since we did what's your age, I'll go ahead and put some random values, 15, um, what's your age? Save and add another. 16, what's your age? Save and add another. And 17, what's your age? Save and add another. Awesome job, guys. Um, whoops, let me just go home. And now if you take a look at our choices, we have six choices. Three for what's your name, three for what's your age, and we have two questions. So now looking back at it, what have we covered so far? We had Django installed, we set up our project, we set up our app, we created our models, we added values to our models through two ways. We used the Django shell and we used the Django admin page. So now looking back at it, which one do you think was easier? The Django admin page or the Django shell? Hopefully it's a Django admin because that's a ton more easier. It saves you a lot of time and it's really useful. But that wraps up this video. Awesome job, guys. We created our database, we populated it. And in the next video, we'll go ahead and show our data onto a URL, onto a web page. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.